what I thought I might do is uh, just read out a bit of a statement and then just take questions if that's all right. Okay. You just let us know when you're ready. Okay, thank you. Um, on the 1st of June 2012, the Queensland Police Service filed a formal application to the Supreme Court under the uh, Criminal Organisation Act uh, for a declaration that the Gold Coast chapter of the Phoenix uh, Outlaw Motorcycle Gang is a criminal organisation. The application marked the first of its kind in Queensland and has resulted or come about after at least two years of dedicated work by members of Task Force Hydra and also other members of the Queensland Police Service have provided valuable information relevant to the application. Today the High Court ruled the provisions challenged in the Criminal Organisation Act in Queensland are in fact valid. The application represents one of a number of strategies used by the Queensland Police Service to continue to investigate, disrupt and dismantle criminal organisations and outlaw motorcycle gangs who pose a risk to the community. As the matter is now before the Supreme Court, I'm limited to what comment I can make only to say that there are a number of milestones that must be achieved uh, before this matter is finalised. Obviously today is one of those milestones. I'll take questions. Well, as I said, the matter now is before the Supreme Court and a judge will uh, make that determination uh, based on the legislation. Yeah, well, I suppose you'd expect that sort of comment from the uh, defence solicitors for the Phoenix. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, the criminal intelligence was brought before a judge of the Supreme Court and that judge made certain decisions on it and uh, we now, as a result of the High Court action, are back in the Supreme Court to determine uh, the complete process. No, that's correct. Uh, we've uh, gone to great lengths to corroborate uh, the information that's been provided by us. Well, the High Court is the highest court in our land. They've made a decision on it. Uh, as the legislation currently sits, we're now back before the Supreme Court. We were fortunate that we were able to learn from decisions of other states and uh, we felt as though when we went forward with the application we were in the best position to give us the best chance to achieve the outcome of today. But as I said, we've still got to go before the Supreme Court and uh, where everything within the legislation will be tested from a operational side. I would su suggest that uh, one step at a time and uh, we'll make that determination as uh, this unfolds. Is there some type of review of the Phoenix case? Because it was essentially addressed by the motorcycle division which is the ODNZ and the Phoenix case. How much is taken on by the Phoenix case? How much is taken on by the ODNZ? Yeah, I think the, uh, the notion that these are just good citizen riding motorbikes is absolute rubbish. Clearly, uh, for the matters that uh, members in the Finks have come before the court, murder, uh, drugs, uh, serious assault, clearly they are a problem uh, for policing organisations and uh, for the community. Uh, they pose a risk to the community, uh, so we should not be uh, drawn into a belief that these are good citizens. Significant in the fact that it's, uh, the legislation has been validated and it now allows us to progress our formal application before the Supreme Court. Well, 
Well, it's certainly not something that uh, we've considered, but uh, part of the dismantling and disruption process involves a number of strategies, and uh, one of them is the financial uh, component, uh, but not necessarily linked to the uh, current process we're in. Uh, we put an application up, and the uh, it thinks Gold Coast uh, decided to challenge it. Uh, they brought the uh, application on. an interesting question. I don't know where they've paid the account yet. Well, the board has made their own offer of payment. Okay. And it was clearly reasonable that it was $100,000. Mm. Mm. That was the price of the property that was being sold to the Yeah, look, there is evidence uh, that we are aware of uh, where there is substantial wealth uh, in some of these OMCZ groups. And we constantly review that and, and where possible and where necessary use the proceeds of crime legislation to address that. The in terms of discovery and what the High Court has said that the Queensland legislation on the provisions that were challenged are valid. My interpretation is, as I said from the outset, that we are now before the Supreme Court where we will be required uh, to uh, justify the action that we've commenced, and that will be by uh, having a judge determine whether there's sufficient evidence uh, to uh, cause the Thinks Gold Coast chapter to be declared, firstly, a criminal organisation. Uh, well, it's it's untested legislation in Queensland, so it's new ground for us. But uh, we believe we have a strong argument, and it will be a matter for the uh, judge of the Supreme Court to decide otherwise. What do you know about the application of the order? That's clearly a valid issue. Well, we continue to monitor the activities of all OMCG groups, in particular the Thinks, and uh, bearing in mind the application was made on the 1st of June uh, 2012, we're obviously several months down the track, and any activities that, uh, uh, that are relevant to our position will be considered uh, when we go back to the Supreme Court. Kept us active. Sorry for that question. Other yeah, I think it'd be fair to say that we uh, we are monitoring other criminal networks and outlaw motorcycle gang groups. Absolutely, the standard of proof still sits with the Queensland Police Service who bring the action. Uh, so the the uh, standard has not changed. I, I'd suggest uh, they, if those comments were made, um, uh, they're uh, perhaps not entirely accurate. What is our legal position if um, the Queensland Police are allowed to set up their own own New South Wales Wild Crime Unit? Uh, I'd, I'd prefer not to get into the uh, the difference in the law. That's really for the lawmakers and the lawyers who brought the case forward. Uh, 
the main concern for me, and I, and I won't comment it on further, is the fact that a Supreme Court judge made the determination initially, and of course, bearing in mind the, the thinks took the action to the High Court before that process could be completed. But certainly the fact that a Supreme Court judge uh, sits across and will make the final determination is, is the highest standard uh, in the Queensland uh, from a uh, court jurisdiction point of view outside the appellant court, so I think that's an important factor. Uh, well, I suppose it's uh, it's as simple as um, law enforcement agencies looking towards other methodologies and strategies to address the issues of criminal networks and outlaw motorcycle gangs. At the time, there were other jurisdictions in South Australia and, and New South Wales uh, either promoting or engaging in legislation that was similar, and uh, due to the interest we have in outlaw motorcycle gangs in Queensland and other criminal networks, uh, we um, held the view that that legislation would be the benefit to us, and, and it grew from there. Not accurately here, perhaps on the coast uh, there's 60 to 70 uh, in that particular Gold Coast chapter, but the thinks are a national OMCG group. but. Um, I can get those figures for you if necessary. The lawyer for the Protection of Employees has said that as it currently stands, the employees application must be read legally to fail. Uh, will the Police be re after the High Court decision this morning, will the Police be redrafting the application to uh, meet those uh, Well, I think uh, we need to take one step at a time. Uh, Let's go to the Supreme Court and see what they say. I'm not overly interested in what a solicitor says about the uh, current position. limit in terms of what our resources yeah, or in terms of how many people are required to request the program. Well I, I think it's about uh, looking at uh, those individuals who we feel should have a control order applied to them and then it's a matter of how we manage that and resource that. Bearing in mind we've got the complete resources of State Crime Operations Command and all the regions of the state to assist if, if, that, if that's required. I wouldn't make comment on whether they are or not. Uh, I don't think we need to build them up any bigger than their egos are at the moment. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, point. I think it needs to be looked at in context of where we are right at this date uh, because um, whilst the, uh, the Commonwealth intentions are, um, are good, I think we need to see where this legislation goes and whether there's a duplication of the process. Uh, certainly there's evidence that suggests that OMCGs and other criminal net, uh, networks uh, are transient and move across border. Uh, but the, the legislation as it sits in our state currently allows us to address that. Uh, but. Uh, I think it's uh, looking at it from a national level and let's see how the uh, current application goes before we can sort of get a true indication of what the state is. Oh, that's a matter for them really. They, uh, they could do that, uh, can't be ruled out. Well, they can be, but... Um, uh, when you're looking at uh, a criminal organisation and the power that the criminal uh, organisation act gives you, there are some uh, marked differences in the powers. Uh, 
uh, look, from time to time that has occurred. Um, I was um, the commander of Operation Syntax where we arrested um, 18 members of the Finks uh, back in 1996 or onwards and they tried that stunt during that investigation. At the end of the day, most of them were uh, prosecuted and found guilty. Um, it's one of their tactics, we're aware of that, and it's up to the police to provide the necessary support to those people who become witnesses. And I think in the main we've done a very good job of that. Because uh, historically they don't, part of their mandate is to be present, to be seen and to um, ensure that uh, people that they may have issues with uh, know that they're about. I just don't see it happen. Well, all I can say there is that uh, inquiries are continuing, um, as you probably would be aware. The husband uh, continues to... Uh, assist police with their inquiries and I probably can't take it any further than that at this time. Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say uh, we saw an opportunity to strengthen our position uh, above the legislation that we had at the time, which, which uh, our primary legislation, of course, is the Criminal Code of Queensland. Can you just say the application that was denied by the court? Yeah, I won't make any comment on that. I think the plan is that there'll be a, um, a listing process and then uh, at some time in the future that there'll be a determination in relation to a, a date where there will in effect be a trial where all the uh, evidence uh, will be uh, determined. Well, I suppose if, if we are successful, there will be a, uh, a declaration made and then from that point we'll assess as to whether control orders need to be uh, put on and then uh, we'll um, continue to assess uh, with uh, whatever other legislation is available to us in relation to proceeds, seizure of properties, all those issues are open to us. So I uh, well, that's part of it. It's not as simple as that. Uh, we always have a threshold we must meet and uh, there are other pieces of legislation available to us to, to use that if necessary. But uh, it's got to be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis and uh, where there is sufficient evidence, we will take action.